Hello, I was contacted by one of the very first people who attended my hair making workshop. Um, during some house renovations, her beloved hair was uh, smashed around quite a lot. Um, I, she's not quite certain what happened, probably whilst on the floor was potentially bowled over by uh, a dog. So um, I have her hair here and we're going to do a little bit of the repair shop. I'm going to take you through some of the things that have happened. So um, the head is pretty much dangling. There's quite a lot of fractures going on there. Both legs at the front are broken. So this one is quite free. And this one is broken down the side. There's quite a lot of cracks going on here. At the top, this back leg is also broken. You can see various bits are missing. The other leg looks intact. So we've got a few repairs that are going on. This was a leaping hair. Um, and as I say, right, right at the beginning of me running the workshop, so we now have a longer base to help with this counterbalance. And back in those days, we didn't paint the base. So I'm going to actually um, roughen up the, the, the top with some plaster and paint that as well. And the whole sculpture will be painted and re-gilted. Uh, so I can see right through, when I actually look at this head, see right through to the armature, the wire armature, which is inside there. I don't want to change the shape, of course, because this was uh, Sarah's own hair shape. So we're going to go through a number of little repairs. Some of them will look quite rough at the beginning because I'm going to break off pieces just to allow things to uh, uh, easily set together. Well, let's get going. Just before we start, I found some photographs from that very first workshop and Sarah has kindly said I can pop them onto this video. So this is Sarah making her hair. Birds flying high, you know how I feel Sun in the sky, you know how I feel Breeze drifting on by, you know how I feel It's a new dawn, it's a new day, it's a new life for me It's a new dawn, it's a new day And I'm feeling good Fish in the sea, you know how I feel River running free I'm feeling 
So the first thing I'm going to do, oh, actually the very first thing I did was I, I washed the hair. Um, if you have been to my workshops and you've made your own hair or bought a kit and made a hair um, out of the kit, then um, the, the finishing paint you put on is actually water uh, resistant. So if it gets really dusty and like this hair here has got lots of texture on, the dust will get into the, the texture. I know there's building dust in this one. Um, uh, so if you want to, you can wash it, uh, just to be aware of that. Um, also in this one, and you can see that I've got a little bit of wet on the, the paper. This has got a baize underneath because the, the hair actually stays indoors. And that's very, very important that if you use a, a, a kit or come on a workshop and you display your hair inside, you put a base underneath because this is raw steel and if there's any sort of moisture that gets onto your um, base then it will rust and if it sits on furniture that will make quite a, quite a nasty mark. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to be quite brutal and if there's a piece like on this foreleg here that is just going to chip off I'm actually going to take it off. Now I'm going to glue that piece back on because it's got the texture that Sarah put on and I don't want to change that texture if I, I can help it. So I'll pop that to one side. Oh, there's another bit that comes underneath. May not all be rescued, but um, we'll, we'll see what we can rescue. Uh, I'm going to just literally rake away the plaster and residue that's that's in all of the breaks pulling off anything that doesn't want to stay I'm being reasonably rough at this stage because we can make all sorts of repairs, but what you don't want is lots of dust in there. going to use that wonderful product called super glue. It's going to be some parts like the this leg. It's this leg is broken but it's actually not coming apart very far. So I am going to just inject a little bit of this super glue into that crack area, just to help it close up as much as anything. Um, just need a bit of tissue to wipe it over. The residue. I'm just going to hold that whilst it sets. At least just tacky enough to hold together. Which is done already. I'm going to do the head last, I think. Next bit. Yeah, just going to glue back on 
the um, bits of plaster that have come off in quite a big chunk. So we keep as much of the original texture as possible. When we put the final coating of paint on, that will act as a glue as well. So there's going to be several layers that will act as adhesive. I don't think that super glue is going to make any difference to this front leg. Um, I think that's going to be all down to when I do the plaster. Oh no, I think I, I'm just going to inject a little bit into the into there. I'm sort of going to make it break a little bit more. Because Sarah's watching this. Hold that for a moment. Let's just hold a bit of that together. All right, let's have a look at this head. I'm just going to go and get some scissors. Excuse the scrunchy noise. going to cut off it's just a little bit of plaster bandage I'm just going to tidy that up a little bit This whole head, good. This whole head is dangling forward, so I'm going to put super glue in all sorts of different areas, and then just come out. Is that coming out? No, it's not. and hold the head together whilst hopefully I've got the glue in the majority of places that will seal that. Legs holding already. The front leg.
Okay. I'm just going to let that sit for a few minutes whilst I mix up just a small amount of plaster. So the head's feeling a bit more secure. Right, back to um, putting a little bit of the plaster on. I've just mixed up uh, a small amount. This is the special outdoor plaster, Cassini plaster, that I use for all of my sculptures that need to have a certain amount of weather resistance. Fabulous stuff. Um, it, it, it's sort of, it's probably a plaster with PVA or something like that in it. And that's the one which we use in the workshop. So I've mixed up a small amount of that. I've just got a, a bowl with some water on. Um, it's just a little, a little bit. Everything's firmed up. And all I'm going to do now is put a small amount of plaster to go into the areas that have got cracks in them. Uh, there's quite a serious one at the back of the, the neck that you should be able to see there. Uh, and just all over the place, there's just little bits. So a lot of this is um, going to be a very fine amount of plaster going on, and then some will be more. And I'm also going to dabble a little bit on the base because uh, when I spoke with Sarah, I said we now paint the base and we also sometimes put a bit of texture on and she said, do that. So I will. So I'm going to start at the top and let's have a look at this leg. I'm going to use my fingers only because I love the feel of plaster. So all I'm going to do here is I'm just putting a little bit of plaster on. And Sarah's got quite a lot of texture on her hair, so when that plaster is starting to set, I will, what I call, dab a little bit of texture into the setting plaster in about five minutes' time. I'm not worrying about putting plaster over the existing plaster that's there and if I see any tiny cracks that I hadn't noticed before I will just fill those. That's done the top leg, just doing another check that there's nothing else up the top leg part. No, I'm going to do the head last. No I'm not, I'm going to do that next because I'm going to have to pick it up. And so another dabble onto my finger. I could and I probably will be using some of this plaster when it's also started to firm up. So the plaster has a bit of a life to it. It starts off quite soft depending on, um, and loose depending on how much water you put in. In my kits I always explain exactly how much water to put in. Um, also now provide in the kits a test little packet of plaster because plaster changes whilst it ages and also it depends on the room temperature and the water temperature. There's quite a few things that will uh, change how a plaster reacts when it's being mixed. So I'm just going to almost pour plaster into the areas that are cracked and open. There's obviously an art to filming <laughs> repairs that the repair shop has got down to a T and they probably have a whole team of people doing this instead of just me in my not very well set up 
art room. So all I'm doing here is I'm just going in to all the cracks. You know, I may come back and revisit the area, but I'm just starting to fill in. And I don't worry about the fact that I've daubed a little bit of plaster here and there. Um, I can either wipe that off or let it become part of the texture because I will be painting the whole thing. So that's just dabbed a little bit of quite loose plaster. Just bring it into that area on the top of that leg now. Remember that leg was actually a bit loose before. That's nice and firm now. Unfortunately, with the kits you buy, you can't actually buy one with the leaping hair. That's one which we do in the um, workshops. Or I can adapt it, and if somebody wants a kit of it, I can make that happen. But um, uh, we just need to work out uh, one or two costings. It wouldn't be that much more, but it has to go in a different size box because the base is so much bigger. And that's because everything hangs off this front paw. Engineering. Just going up and having a look underneath that front paw, yes. There's a, not front paw, front leg. So, it doesn't look like I've put much on, but it's beginning to establish the base of the repair. The paint will do a lot. And each part of this, the, the super glue, this special plaster that's got the PVA element in it, um, the paint, they all have a, an adhesive side to it. I'm just going to wipe off some of the excess plaster. blend in bits of plaster with the existing texture that Sarah had put on. And I'm letting this just dry a little bit before I just dabble it a bit with my fingers. I'm, I'm trying a piece out now just to see how the texture goes and it's not quite there. In fact, I think I still have a piece of the original. I'm just going to push that on. Okay. And there's a little bit underneath there and I have a piece of the original and I'm going to just dab a tiny amount of this. So if any of you have got one of the hairs done at my workshop and you have breakages and you need more plaster, just um, get in touch with me, send me an email or give me a buzz and I'll pop a little repair pack into the post for you. Um, so a little pack of uh, Cassini plaster, some uh, paint and some gilt. So I'm just ladling up a little bit more onto some of these areas. Just keep trying that texture. Just by dabbling it. And it will gradually just keep blending in with the existing. So 
around. There was quite a deep piece missing down at the front here. So I may have to build some of that up. And I can do that more when the plaster is almost set. I'm just going down to all of the cracks that are in here just to make sure that you can't actually see the crack when it's finished and all I'm doing is I'm dabbling, dabbling, dabbling with a little bit of plaster. Plaster is beginning to settle, set a little bit more, um, but I need it to be just that little bit longer set. And it's beginning to get a bit more texture in it. And the other thing I'm going to do, I'm going to put some texture onto the base plate as well, which I agreed that I'll do with Sarah. Just dabbling it again. Just as this plaster is beginning to settle, just building this area up. Gonna check under the chin that I've got just a little bit that I want to go up and under that chin area. Sorry if you can't see. Right, so whilst that's setting, I'm gonna put a little bit on the base. So this is literally um, just putting plaster and swirling it around on the base. Then we're going to be painting this and it will just give a nice finish. The other thing it will do is I'm going to push some plaster up and underneath where the uh, foot hits the base plate and that will add as another anchor. Once it sets, it actually sets quite hard. Pushing a little bit <clears throat> up and under. Okay, I'll just help set in the, the foot. I'm going to use a pick in a moment just to push that under. that in. Just 
swirling it around as if it's ground that the hair is running on. Let's come back to just feeling this top. Yeah, it's beginning to fill in. Again, all I'm doing is checking that the cracks are beginning to become part of the sculpture again and not an obvious crack. So I'm now looking back to check that this ear that had a big chunk of it taken out, when it goes down it, um, and joins with the head, it's in a straight plane. So um, it doesn't look like there's a repair that's gone on there. Again, just keep turning it around. These, uh, Turntables are marvellous for this kind of work. I get them off Amazon. They're called a TV turntable, so it means that you can put a, quite a heavy sculpture on them. And it turns around with these. And they're only, well, they're under a tenner. And if anybody goes for the large hair kit, I, I give the link to Amazon. But if you just search on Amazon for TV turntable, you have to make sure you get the, the big one because they've got different sizes. This is the, I think it's 12 inch version. And it means that when you're making one of the large hair um, sculptures, in fact, I think you can see one outside. Uh, she says, I'm trying to get a view. There we go. <laughs> that's one that's outside. You do one of those large sculptures the TV turntable really makes a difference I don't put it in the kit because that adds a huge cost um, to the the overall kit and packaging etc it's something which you can just do yourself get yourself from Amazon The, again getting the texture on the base plate by dabbing my fingers I've had people during the workshops do all sorts of things in the symbols etc into the plaster as it's drying you got a, whoops excuse me that was close hit my head on the <laughs> the light that Probably not doing a good enough job on this, but there we go. Yes, people do all sorts of things on the, the workshops to add interest to their hairs, scrolls and Celtic symbols, etc. Right. I think we're getting there. Just checking that every bit that needs to be filled is filled. And then I'm going to leave this for the morning just to settle in really well before I paint it. Going back to this top. 
top of the leg here it just needs a little bit of extra dabbling in just that little bit of texture on that big chunk that was missing. I want to keep coming back to that because what I don't want to do is to end up with something that there's an obvious repair. Lovely. Right, so um, we will leave that to dry for the morning. And when we come back, we'll be ready to paint it. So here we are. Um, the plaster has dried. The head is now not wobbling at all, nor the legs. Uh, the whole body will wobble a little bit because all it's um, attached to this base with is a, a very a uh, thin rod that goes all the way up through um, the body. Um, so there'll always be a bit of bounce, but that's absolutely fine. Um, so I'm ready to paint it and I'm gonna do, I'm gonna paint the whole lot because there's so many little repairs. Whereas if you were just doing a, a, a small repair, say this leg, you might just paint the leg if, um, if that's what you wanted to do. Right, so. I've got my paint here. I've already given it a jolly good um, stir or shake. Whenever I sell the kits, I've got shake me written on the top of the, the lids. So I'm going to paint the whole hair. And the first thing I'm going to do is, is actually pick it up and go into the areas that are harder to reach once there's sticky paint all over it. So I'm turning it upside down and painting on. When you're painting on top of the old um, paint and gilt, there are going to be some areas that may repel the paint because the gilt has actually got some wax in it. Uh, but don't worry about that, it will all add to the texture. So I tend to do the hard to reach bits first by holding up the hair as I'm doing here. And literally this paint is Powertex paint and it has a certain amount of, it's, it's an acrylic paint anyway. So acrylic paint has got a plastic in it. So that creates an adhesion. And on top of that, um, they add a product that helps it become a fabric hardener which is its original use but I use it for nearly all my sculpture work because it adds a certain amount of water protectiveness. So that's got I normally start right at the top when I paint after I've done the underneath and I didn't this time so bear with me and I'm literally going over the whole thing it does turn it into what looks like a chocolate bunny but the gilt finish will completely transform it as you can see, there was a fair amount of texture on the original hair, which I didn't want to change. I don't want to change the original work that Sarah did. Just 
keep spinning it around. Doesn't matter if you get this paint on your hands or anything, it does wash off. And I am going to be facing, painting the base so it doesn't matter that I'm basically beginning to make a bit of a mess because that is me all over. And I've just seen the dogs come back from their walk and I think my husband's about to bring me in a cup of coffee, which will be very welcome. So it's just bring me in my coffee. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. Missing you. Missing me. <laughs> there we go. I've got him trained well most of the time. Just doing a good coating. Suddenly it starts pulling everything together. All of those repairs disappear because there's so much texture on this particular hair, then where the repairs have been made, they will just literally blend in. I may have been painting some of it out of sight. Sorry about that. This is not exactly my um, forte. Uh, filming everything that I do. So you tend to forget that the camera is at a different position to you. Down. Check that I've got to all of the areas. This hair has got to be about a year and a half old now, I would have thought, something like that. What's quite lovely is that the hairs have ended up all around the country and other countries. So I've had hairs go off to France and Spain and the Outer Hebrides, which is rather nice. And I know the kits have gone all over the place as well. So that's, that's really nice to know as well. That's got most of the hair done. I'm now going to paint the base, which wasn't originally painted because back in those days, back at the beginning, I didn't paint the base, but that was something I brought in later on. As I said earlier, normally these leaping hairs are now on longer bases to accommodate the tension that comes from or the weight that comes from hanging off just one paw on the ground. When I do the two day workshops and people want to do the very large leaping hair that I have, I've got a couple out in the garden they're um, about a metre, just less than a metre and a half long. Um, the base for those weighs 15 kilos. <laughs> That's just to keep the hair up because the, the whole weight of the actual hair itself is just down on one small foot. So you have to have a very, very heavy steel, thick steel base plate to counteract all of that weight coming down just onto one foot. So Andy 
um, welds. Uh, we use um, angle iron to go up through the hair uh, because there, there's so much weight that's coming down that foot. So there's quite a lot of engineering that goes into that particular model. Uh, it looks very, very simple, but very spectacular when finished because um, it doesn't look like it should all balance on that one foot, but it does beautifully, beautifully. And there we have this stage. I'm going to let that dry thoroughly before we bring this hair to life with the gilt finish, which is always a favourite stage during the live workshops. There we go. Looking good. Okay, and as I say in all of my videos that go with the sculpture kits, wash these brushes straight away because this paint is a fabric hardener and it does a beautiful job of hardening the bristles in the paintbrush. So we will now leave this a while to, to dry and then I'll be back for the final stage. See you shortly. Here we are for the last stage. It's always the most um, interesting stage, I think, of the build and it happens in, in seconds, literally. And this is where we're going to put some gilt cream on. I use Liberin. Um, so Rambule, I think that's called Rambule. It's a fabulous gilt, often used by restorers of uh, antique frames. So you need the barest hint, the barest hint. That This is a big job because when I sell my kits I send out a little part of this jar with every kit um, but in essence that would do thousands of hairs um, I have to send out a bigger blob than um, you would ever use purely because it would just evaporate if I sent a little amount so I've put a little tiny bit on this sponge I'm just going to put the lid back onto here and what I'm going to do first is I'm going to wipe off some of the gilt that I've actually put on the sponge and I'm going to do that just on the paper behind. It stops getting a large lump of gilt somewhere onto the sculpture. So I'm going to start on the back legs and you won't be able to see this very well because this is very much something you've got to see in in life as such that the camera never really picks this up very well literally i'm rubbing a little tiny tiny bit on and then with the back of the sponge straight away i'm just rubbing over and all that's doing is it's gradually highlighting a little bit of gilt onto the raised areas of the sculpture So it's very hard for me to show this on the film, but just believe me when I say it is the moment when people go, oh my goodness, what's happening here? It's fantastic. 
and some people like to put a lot of bronze on and some just a little. I think both works absolutely fine. I quite like it when I just highlight the top areas rather than putting too much on but it is entirely up to individuals. I always say start off putting a tiny amount on because you can always go to town. But um, once this is on, you can't get it off. The only way to deal with it if you've accidentally um, splurged on too much is to paint over it. Um, the paint doesn't always adhere terribly well because this has got a wax finish. Um, but it's usually enough just to uh, cover up really bad mistakes. So you can see this one little tiny bit that I've put onto the sponge is gradually bringing the hair to life. I don't know whether you can see the difference there. This is where I perhaps should have been facing the window. Whoops, I've got a light right next to me, but it's probably not picking up terribly well. As I say, I'm not a professional with this old video thing. It's just to give you an idea of what goes on when we can do a little bit of restoration of a hair in trouble. The big hairs I've got outside I've often gone through this, and that's because of the dogs usually career into them all the time when they're having the ball thrown for them. And one of my hairs, the one actually that you can see sitting out there, was sitting on a mole hill. And this mole came up underneath it and gradually during the winter buried the hair right up to her chest. And in the end, uh, because we're on clay soil the hair was like frozen into this lump of clay and I had to grab her by her neck and pull her out and in doing so I broke both the back legs um, she virtually came off the pin that's holding her on there um, it was a right mess but going through exactly the same process as I've been through on here she is now sitting back out there in all her former glory I've actually got my hair done. I'm going to put just a little bit onto the base plate as well. And this has all been done with this one little tiny, tiny amount of gilt that I put onto this sponge and most of it was wiped off onto that piece of paper just there. What I will do is I will leave this and then come back and have another look just before I take her off to Sarah, because she's a local lady. There we go. So, I'm rather hoping you can see all of the finishes. that have been made. There she is, back in one piece again. There we go. Coming up are some photographs from the wonderful workshops we've had in the past. Um, if you'd like to join us for a future workshop, please have a look at my website, joegardenart.co.uk. You can also purchase kits to do at home of these uh, very same hairs using exactly the same material that we do in the uh, workshops. So it's all on the website. Birds flying high, you know how I feel. Sun in the sky, you know how I feel. Reeds drifting on by, you know how I feel.
It's a new dawn, it's a new day, it's a new life for me. It's a new dawn, it's a new day, it's a new life. Ooh. And I'm feeling good. Machine. 